Hey guys, James MC Reviews here, and welcome to another episode of the Cinematic Bucket List series. With Avatar 2, The Way of Water, hitting theaters this weekend, I thought it'd be fun to look at another James Cameron movie, one that wasn't nearly as successful, Alita Battle Angel, released in 2019. This is based off the manga and the OVA of the same name, and is about a robot girl with no memories who is picked out of the trash by a doctor and given a new body. As she starts to rebuild her memory and encounter new friends and enemies, she discovers she was part of a larger plan and now has to fight to finish the job. The history behind this movie is actually pretty interesting. Cameron had actually seen the OVA, the 93 movie, and he had acqui acquired the rights with a plan to direct this movie. But then as more projects kept getting in the way and some more successful than others, he finally realized like, you know, the only way this movie is going to get made is if I give the directing job to someone else and I can just produce it. So that's when Robert Rodriguez, the guy who you might know from Spy Kids and Shark Boy and Lava Girl and Sin City and all those other movies, came on to direct. And now in 2019, we have this movie. And now to give you my background on uh, Battle Angel and that whole like franchise, I haven't read the manga, but I did watch the OVA after the live action movie just to get some like context and some background. Um, I really do like the OVA. Um, I think it's uh, it looks beautiful. It's very graphic and really just cool looking. Um, I think the the story definitely, uh, at least the way that it's like formatted if de it definitely feels like several episodes like mashed together um and i feel like things just kind of like happen with not a whole lot of like introduction which <laughs> ironically we'll get to my thoughts on the movie but ironically it's the exact opposite with the movie is there is a shit ton of introduction but not a whole lot of payoff but I liked the OVA. I thought it was really cool. I'd probably rate it a four out of five. Um, and uh, yeah, when I first saw the uh, live action movie, Alita Battle Angel in the theater, I really liked it. I, I had a lot of fun with it. I wasn't looking forward to it. When I kept seeing the trailer, I was like, uh, this just looks like it's gonna be another stupid live action anime adaptation and shit like that. But then I saw it and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of awesome. And having rewatched it, I still really like it. I still think it's awesome, but I can definitely see why it didn't resonate with a lot of people. For one, let me go over the stuff that I like. I think that the world that they create here looks amazing. I mean, you know, Cameron is really good with, you know, the world building, and when you put Robert Rodriguez, who, you know, creates these, like, incredible looking worlds basically on no money. Like, when you put those two together, it feels like a match made in heaven, and I feel like they were the perfect people to work on a movie like this, because the world that they create, Iron City, it just looks, like, so full of life. It's so interesting and intricate, and there's so much stuff going on. And the visual effects on it as well, like, the visual effects in general look really awesome. Like, I mean, there are some parts where it looks kind of goofy, uh, particularly towards the end, but for the most part, the visual effects are really well done. I was surprised to find out that pretty much all of Alita is CG. Like, obviously the eyes and the face and everything, but even the clothes that she's wearing, her body, her shoes, everything like that is completely CG. Maybe it's because, uh, I've just come off of watching the Polar Express again, and I've seen mocap turn out really badly that I have even more of an appreciation for uh, how they got Alita to look. I'll also say the actors all across the board are, did a really good job. Um, I thought the girl playing Alita was really charming and uh, just really cool. And I, I will say some of the like dialogue is a little bit, you know, cheesy and corny and anime and everything like that, but I think she sells it well. I really liked Christoph Waltz as uh, the scientist, as the doctor. Um, I think him and Alita have, you know, a great connection. You buy them as sort of a father figure and a daughter figure. The villains as well are also really, like, enjoyable. I love Mahershala Ali. Uh, I love seeing Ed Skrine in a movie like this, just continuing to exude that Francis energy of just being a slimy dick bag. Uh, Jennifer Connelly, I was surprised to see her in this movie, but she does really well. I don't know if I've seen her as a villain in anything, but she she played it really well. The action as well, it's, it's everything that you'd expect if you've seen the OVA. 
it, they translate it pretty well here. Like, it is PG-13, but it is a very hard PG-13 where, like, if you, essentially, if you change the color of the blood, this is practically an R. Um, there's, you know, dismemberments, there's decapitations, there's just all this crazy stuff, like, that you would not expect to see in a PG-13, but it looks awesome. It's really over the top and fun to watch. So with all that being said, I think it's time to address the biggest problem. It, it's ironically the biggest strength and the biggest weakness of the movie is the story. The story itself is actually really good. It translates both the OVA and the manga uh, into one sort of story, even though I haven't read the manga. I, haven't, I can't really uh, comment on like how well they adapted that or what they changed or whatever, but um, I think the story, it is very interesting, it's very compelling, I think the characters are very interesting, and it gets you sucked into this world to where you want to know more about it, but unfortunately, maybe because they adapted both versions, it means that there's a lot of, like, story and exposition and, you know, sort of setup that they cram into here without a whole lot of explanation. Like, they're talking about, like, her past and how she was involved in this like 300 year plus war and you know all the stuff going on with Zalem and Iron City and you know the the conflicts and everything like that and you know it feels it feels like they're cramming five movies worth of story into this one movie and it almost feels kind of like Dune part one where you know it's a lot of setup but it doesn't really feel like a, its own compact story like it is really banking on you know having multiple movies and sequels to expand upon this which honestly makes it even more heartbreaking that the movie did underperform and you know critics did kind of give it mixed reviews and it as we know it at the moment is probably not going to get a sequel because like that just ruins it even more like you, you sunk all of this like story and everything into this one movie in the hopes of getting a sequel that you will most likely never get rather than telling a singular cohesive you know compact narrative that sure you can set up stuff for other movies but if they never end up happening then at least you have this one movie that ties everything together you know very nicely there are a lot of things that you could cut out the whole, like, relationship with Hugo and Alita, I thought it was cute, I thought it was fine, but it really didn't, like, add too much in the grand scheme of things. And it, what also helped is that actor is, it's nothing against the actor or the performance or anything, I just, I just don't think he was the right choice or anything. The whole motorball thing, like, as cool as those sequences were, they just kind of, you know, felt like something to fill up time like you, we didn't it's cool like we didn't have to necessarily see those sequences but I understand why it was important because like you know Mahershali and Jennifer Connelly were heavily involved in like the the behind the scenes of uh those games and everything like that so yeah as much as I really like this movie I can fully understand why it did not register with a lot of people and, you know, what also didn't help its case was it came out around the same time as Captain Marvel, so while everyone was busy arguing over that movie, this one kind of came and went, and no one really talked about it. And I'm glad that it's gotten more attention over time after it's left theaters, but I don't know. I still really wish that we could have gotten, you know, a follow-up or just have it continue in some way, because I really do like the world, I really like the characters. I think the story had potential, like, if they had just developed more on it, I feel like it could have translated well to, to more movies, and it, it fucking set itself up perfectly for a sequel. I would have loved to have seen that. Um, I mean, honestly, I would have loved to have seen five sequels to this as opposed to Avatar, but regardless, I'm still happy with the movie we got. It's got a share of problems, but I still think it's a lot of fun, and if you haven't seen it already, I would... One, I would highly recommend checking out the OVA, because the OVA is really good. And I would also highly recommend uh, checking out the movie. Um, it's definitely one of, if not the best, live-action anime adaptations out there. 
And once again, I would much rather have this continue on with several sequels than Avatar, but yeah, that's, that's the way the world works, I guess. Um, if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it a 3.5 out of 5. But anyway, that does it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you've seen Alita Battle Angel. What are your thoughts on it? Have you read the manga? Have you seen the OVA? How do those compare? Um, let me know all that stuff down below. Uh, I'll be back very soon with my quick review of Avatar 2, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date on when I'm posting. Follow me on all my social media, subscribe to my main channel. Everything you need to know will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Swan, swan.